Good morning. Good morning. It's morning devos with Jen and Jay, and it is Tune, tune in, in Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tune In Tuesday. Tuesdays for Tune In. Tune In on Tuesday. Everybody tune in. in. And he did that before I put this on. <laughs> Good morning, Tanya. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning. Good. What? This is the blue hat. It's not. Oh! It is not just a blue hat. It is not. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Elizabeth, Brenda. Stirring it again. That's right. I was waiting for you to ask me what stood out to me on Sunday, and it was your ability to poop disturb. I think I scared the people behind me when oh, I stood really? because I, I reacted. I stood up. I threw my book on the floor, and I said, "That's it. I'm out of here." I know it was one of the highlights <laughs> for me too. Good morning, Karen and Leanne and Paul and Sue. So good to see you this morning. So it is Tune In Tuesday, and we really are friends, even though we cheer for different teams. Well, maybe debatable. <laughs> we are coworkers <laughs> who work together today. <laughs> But it is Tune In Tuesday, the day when we tune in to what we talked about on Sunday. That's right. And so the question is, what did we talk about on Sunday? Good morning, Velma. Good morning. So we have our coffee. We have our Bibles. We have our notes. Uh, <laughs> Another Sunday with team jerseys. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Elizabeth and Rob. Yes. No. See? Yeah. It's all yeah, about the toque. Yeah. We could have a toque Sunday. Toque Sunday. We should have toque Sunday. On family. Yeah. Winter. But Fest but day. That thing. <laughs> I was trying to think of the name of it. I could, Baptism Sunday. I could baptize with a toucan. It's true. I could baptize with my BFMC toucan, just so I don't cause trouble. I don't have a BFMC toucan. I haven't arrived. <laughs> All right, friends. <laughs> <laughs> what did we talk about on Sunday? Love to hear what we talked about on Sunday. And uh, <clears throat> I'm still thinking about it a little bit. I like it when, I, when I'm thinking about it two or three days later. That's always a good sign. Yeah. So, yes. So, happy Tuesday, Velma. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Laurel, welcome. So, yes, what did we talk about on Sunday? And, yes, it has something to do with the headgear. Yeah. That we, at least this is how I opened it up. And I know you couldn't, well, maybe, you could totally tell I was a poop disturber in my family, <laughs> couldn't you? Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Good morning, Ken. Good morning. So, yes, I was the one that would cause the problems. Only, mm -hmm. you know, because I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Yes. Totally. Well, and so, <clears throat> and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit about today as mm -hmm. well, is how God did something. Yes. Yeah. So... You guys are all like, did they say anything else other than talk about Ottawa and Toronto on Sunday? And it's like, well, we did. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. Great job leading worship. That was good. It was Enjoyed just it. a wonderful time. So on Sunday, we are in this the middle of this series called Entrusted because we've been entrusted with the city of Barrie. And how do we help our community experience Christ? Right. So each Sunday, as we unpack a little bit of Ephesians, we're always tying it back into how to help our community experience Christ with what with what we're learning. So this past Sunday, and I know as soon as I say this, you guys are going to be right. like, it's gonna be in the, um, they're typing it right now because there's the delay. Right. And so I asked, <laughs> my dad would just ask us the question, can you not just get along? Mm -hmm. Good morning, Frida. Can you not just get along? And now I often could control the way I pushed buttons. My sister could not. She had an acquired brain injury. So that just, the things that she was dealing with, she found it very difficult to deal with and to process. Right. Um, so really it wasn't her fault. 
but I had full control <laughs> and I knew the buttons I was pushing and I continued to push them anyways. Mm. Um, so it brought us to this section on, um, in the middle of chapter four of Ephesians on unity. Cause you had preached last week. God has called us to unity. There's, mm. you know, one Lord, one savior, one baptism, baptism. And at the end of it, we can just go, what, how is that even possible? So we have right. this wonderful passage that Paul just sort of, sneaks in it seems because it doesn't really make sense yeah. with the rest of the passage and so but then as you unpack it and you read through psalm 68 and you're like oh this is a passage about the king yeah. who has come to save his people and to deliver them and then to equip them to live the life that he wants them to live yeah and then he goes in and that's what we're going to talk about this coming sunday um the gifts that he gave so that we could experience the yeah. fullness I think that's one thing that's really important for us as we read the Bible to know and to understand. When we see Psalms referred to in the New Testament, it's important that we actually understand that the the original readers would have known. Like these are, it's like um, these are like the pop culture hits almost, right? So when when Paul says this, these verses. It's like he's breaking out into song right. uh, and giving them a reference for them to say, oh, yeah, right. Oh, the king gives amazing gifts. That's amazing, right? So yeah. um, so it would be similar to me rhyming off Taylor Swift not for me. Lyrics. Or, well, that's the thing. There's such a wide range of See, I was I was like, thinking, whose lyrics should stay I? Stay alive. Stay, stay alive. And yeah. you, what do you do? Yeah. You go, do, do. Right. Like there's this connection that you yeah. make. Okay, that's who's saying this. This is where it was, and all you need to ha is that one little phrase. And that's you're right. That's exactly what Paul is doing. He is playing on what they have mm -hmm. in their mind. It's yeah. the trigger. Yeah. So when you see, like, I'm giving you more reading, <laughs> but when you're reading through the New Testament and you see um, that something is uh, is quoted. Find out where it's coming from, and if it's from the Psalms, go go read that mm. whole Psalm, yeah, and get a get a bit of a picture of, of what is actually being said or spoken of or celebrated in that Psalm, mm -hmm. because then, you know, and and the, I think the the most, um, I, I think the greatest example that I I think of is Jesus on the cross. Yes. He says, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" And we're like, what? What is he talking about there? And then you go back and you read Psalm 22, and yeah. you realize that he's actually saying this is a fulfillment of the scriptures. Yes. This is this is what David was talking about when he wrote. He was writing about me, and, yeah. and then you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So you need to when you see those links into the Old Testament, go back, read the links, and that that will give you a fuller understanding of why. The New Testament writer is pulling because mm. is it is it a prophecy? Right. Is it you know the fulfillment of, or is it a link? See how it all sort of links together. So the Bible is the first hyperlinked uh, <laughs> document. So true, right? So true. Yeah. And so uh, this past Sunday, as I was working through it, I was just for me personally just overwhelmed by the victory of Christ, like what He's actually won for us. And so when the things like affliction or despair or de despondency or depression i have a whole lot of d's mm -hmm. and i need to be delivered from that then i just need to remember that's exactly what the king did i love the part that it says he ascended well why did he ascend because he actually descended right. to take care of the, he saw he saw what was going on and he delivered his people mm -hmm. And that's just like, right, like that's what we need to appropriate. For, that's what I need to appropriate today is that God has delivered me from the bonds, the slavery to sin and death. So I don't need to walk in that. I yeah. think it's like, no, God, you won. No, you, God, no, you won. You won. You won. Like uh, victory in Jesus. Maybe you need to sing victory yeah. in Jesus today. All <laughs> but all day long, it's like, no, I want to walk in the truth of what he's won for me. Yeah. Yeah. And that was that was the big thing that that's so to me is just are you walking in that truth or or are you caught up in the the despair and the difficulties mm -hmm. that that you find yourself up against and mm -hmm. and we all find ourselves up against many 
many difficulties, whether they be financial, whether they be health, whether they be relational. Um, and it's very easy to be overwhelmed by, by that. And, um, and to even, you know, to, to give up or throw, throw it or, or like just not try. Um, and, and even yes. blame, blame God in all of that. And, and I think this passage reminds us, no, he has given you good things. And as you mentioned, as we talked about earlier in the book of Ephesians, uh, every spiritual blessing and equipped us to mm -hmm. live a victorious Christian life. And so when, and that doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes or screw up, but when we do, then we say, we actually say, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, that, uh, you forgive for this mistake. You, there's grace, which is humongous and you've equipped me to yeah. do better, to, yes. to walk in victory. And so thank you that you've done all of that. And now I'm going to trust you yeah. and, and walk in that. Um, and, but then to actually trust him and allow him, uh, to take over. And when you find yourselves in situations where you're tempted to, um, to behave in, in a way that, you know, goes against what, what God has for you, uh, to remind yourself of those thankful statements and give them back to him in the, in that moment and then walk yeah. in that, in that victory. Yeah. And um, I, I love yeah. the Trinitarian aspect of this passage, right? It's God who gives grace. It's Jesus who won the victory. And then it's the spirit who gives the gifts. So it's, yeah. it's the three in one that's at work here. And, and you mentioned something, uh, just before we sat down was the fact that you don't need to be a prison convict. Right. Yes. It's like, if you're in prison, are you a convict? Just, just in general, you don't need to be a prison convict. Like, that's just... <laughs> you know, to experience the uh, grace of God. Right, that's the second part. Right, that's the second part. <laughs> um, but you don't need to be a prison convict to experience the grace of God. Yeah. It's, it's, Lord, I don't want to kill my children this, month, this morning, right? I don't want to kill my child this morning. Uh, I don't. I don't want to lose my sanctification on the way to work because of so and so who ran in front of me today, right. or the person who's walking across when they have the right of way. That little, you know, the silver walkie man, the white walkie man, and I'm just like, come on, like <laughs> clocks are ticking. <laughs> I've got things to do, right? It's no, like in those moments, like his grace is enough. Like yeah. he has given the the verses. Um, but to each one, not just some, each one, to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Right. And so, and, and so your ability to love your children in difficult situations or your ability to, um, to let the person who's being like really mean and loud and complaining in the grocery store, go ahead of you in the line. That is just as miraculous as the prison convict coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Like yeah. the, that is, and it's to be celebrated just as, just as much um, yeah. because grace is grace mm -hmm. and it's incredible and it's free, right? Like I, I shared yesterday a, a Facebook memory that I had posted 11 or 12 years ago um and it was just the the quote that said if your grace wasn't free you got ripped off <laughs> um oh, and good. and and that's what makes it amazing that it's free like you didn't have to do anything to receive that grace which allowed you to not kill your children which that <laughs> is a win is a win <laughs> it is a win because Right, first thing in the morning, the enemy's going to come in like a oh, flood. Yeah. First thing in the morning, because if you lose it with your kids at seven fifty-five, how does that set you up for eight fifty-five when you get to work? Yeah, right. Or at twelve fifty-five when you're like running late and you have to get gas in the car because you got to pick up those same kids after school and take them to hockey or ballet or video class, like whatever it is. Right. So recognizing that that grace is enough to deliver you mm -hmm. from whatever situation that you find yourself in that you that is is difficult like yeah. the grace is enough christ has won the victory and you have been given every th single thing that you need to live a life that's full of godliness and hope yeah 
Praise God. <laughs> right? I just want to be like, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me pray. Okay. Lord God, yours is the victory. Yours is the victory. And it's by your grace. It's it's that enabling grace that goes before, preparing a way, helping us out. And Lord, we need your grace today. We need to walk in the victory that Christ won for us on the cross, defeating Satan, sin, and death, and nailing it to the cross, and then receiving the gifts of your Holy Spirit so we can experience the fullness of life. So, Father, help us to remind us today, remind us grace, victory, gifts. Mm. Lord, help us today, help us today to be the people of you. Light and life and joy and truth. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about today. <laughs> I got to take off this hat. It's squeezing my brain. I think it's the hair though. All right. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Remember to like. And share. And go outside. And. Help your community. Experience Christ. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>